Let's get started. Um, I, guess I guess I have to stop share on this screen when I want to go to another one. Anyway, I'll well, talk, talk to you, uh, talk talk to you about FSA frequency shift key. And there is a simulation example that I'm going to talk through. Everyone hearing me okay? That's just fine. My internet is good. Okay. So let's go down to, to the simulation. Oh, now if I want to share my photograph uh, that I have on another screen, that's going to be hard to do, right? <laughs> Okay, okay, well, let's, let's just talk through this one. one. Uh, uh, this is strictly a, a software simulation of an FSA transmitter and receiver. And it's one of the tutorials. So I set it up to just have a random source for a bit stream. And this is in bytes. So the unpack k bits gives me eight bytes with one bit each out of each byte that this random source generates. Now I'm using the the Modo radio teletype code. Say again. I didn't hear that. Uh, Bodo, Bodo, whatever you pronounce his name, Emil, <laughs> for the, the five-bit radio teletype code, which is defined as a 22 millisecond uh, symbol time, which gives the 40, familiar 45 baud calculation. So to generate that rate, the repeat is a sample rate times the 22 milliseconds. So after you have repeated that bit that many times, you've occupied 22 milliseconds of samples. And then we stick in a throttle because this, there's no hardware in here, so we have to throttle at that rate and then convert it to a float. Now, if I seem to be hurrying through this, you'll see it again in the next thing I talk about. So a low-pass filter just to knock off the edges. And then the VCO is the real uh, key to this thing. Depending on the input of the VCO, it will generate an output frequency. And if you look down here in the parameters, I want to generate a mark tone of 2295 and a space tone of 2125. So I picked a full scale of 2500 just to be a round number. So the, the uh, input with a zero, I want the, well, first of all, the full scale 2500 is two pi times 2,500 over one. So the sensitivity is 15,708. Now with a space input, I want to generate 2,125. So that fraction of the 2,500 gives me a 0.85. And then the mark frequency of 2,295 is, uh, I will multiply times 0 0.068 or add that to get a total offset of 0.918. So that's what's happening here. I take the input, multiply it times the 0 0.068, add 0 0.85, run that into the VCO. So a, a zero gives me 21.25, a one gives me 22.95. So that's the transmitter. Now let's look at the receiver real quick. Uh, by the way, these virtual sync, virtual source pairs, no different than if I took that output 
and connected it to this input by the same name. So this output is to that input. So on the receive side, I want to downshift the frequencies by to the center frequency of the two mark and space. So that mark is above zero and space is below zero. The squelch should not really need it right now, but you'll see it again when we go on the air. And then the quadru quadrature D mod will put out a positive volt, uh, signal when the frequency is above zero and a negative when the frequency is below zero. And then the binary slicer puts out a one when we're positive input and a zero when we're zero or negative input, which I hope you realize is back to the bits we were transmitting. And so converting that to float, we can put it into a time sink, converting this transmit data, which is already a float. If we just put that straight into the time sink, there's a delay from all these boxes through here. So if we stick a delay in here, we can adjust the delay until it's the same matching what we transmit, delay the transmit and it'll match what we receive. So if you go down here to the bottom of this example, you see the, the green is the the transmit and the blue is the received and there's a delay. I had took this picture with a delay of 59. If you do it with a delay of 202, then all the red goes away and these two patterns overlap. So any quick questions on that? Okay, it took me eight minutes. Now, the next trick is to share my next screen with you. So I guess I have to stop share on this. Derek, you coach me if I go astray here. Oh, okay, stop share. Now I'm gonna share again and I want to share I don't see the one I want to share. <laughs> oh, exit full screen. Now, That's the one I want to share. You see the flow group? Looks great. Flow diagram? Yeah. Okay. So that's what we just talked through. So now I have created a package that takes this basic transmitter uh, logic and puts it into a transmit flow graph. And I took the receive part and put it into another flow graph. And this is on GitHub. So here's the transmitter, same general stuff down here, filter, VCO, output's going to go to the audio sync, uh, the headphones or speaker jack. The input's what's different here. I'm going to take a text message as an input, and I'm going to run it through this embedded Python block convert the UTF to Bodo, and then create vectors where the bits represent symbols for the five-bit Bodo plus a start and 
two stops in my case. I'm generating eight bits. And then I'm going to send that out to the sink. And then on the receive side, same thing for filter squelch. Still don't need it yet. Dmod. Now let's look at some sample rates here. Sample rate was 48K because of the audio source, but I want to step that down. So this, this fur filter has a decimation of 50. That means divide the sample rate by 50. So now we're down to 960 samples per second. And then I'm going to do a rational resampler on that. I'm going to decimate that by 960 and interpolate by 500, which gives me a sample rate of 500 samples per second. And the note says 11 samples per bit. Well, if you look at my original repeat on the transmit side, I was getting 22 samples per symbol at when I was trans transmitting it, but now I've got 11 samples per 500 samples per second. But it's exact. I didn't want a fractional uh, sample to deal with. I wanted to know that every 11 samples I had one symbol. So uh, I now the next step is sometimes because of upper sideband, lower sideband, conventions, whatever, mark and space are reversed. So this is a reverse switch <laughs> in case they're running the other, other one. So run that down here, slicer. Now the terminal display sync is another embedded Python block where I and I was going to change that to, I was going to show you the code, but you can look at it on GitHub. I uh, Basically, it's a software UART. I look at the stream of bits until I detect uh, 11 uh, zero bits, because that's what a start bit or start symbol is except I do majority voting to eliminate some noise. So I, th I think my code currently says, if I have at least seven, it must be good. Mm -hmm. And I then, mean, I uh, know what's wrong. Pardon? Someone asked a question. I didn't hear it. Okay. So majority voting on each symbol time so if I assemble the uh, start bit, five data bits, and detect a stop bit, if all that looks right, then that must be a good symbol. And this also avoids the issue of one stop bit, one and a half stop bits, or two stop bits. <laughs> as soon as I get one good stop bit, then I go back into trying to resync on the next start bit. So we can have one, two, or a hundred or infinity stop because that's the idle state. <laughs> okay, so once I have created created the the input byte, I convert it from Bodo back to UTF, assemble a message, and push it out on a ZMQ message sync. So that's my receiver.